okay, I found this video and it's this, the like text on the screen, whatever says, um, when his masculine energy is so high that you transform from a strong, independent woman into a playful, carefree girl who says silly things, laughs loudly, wears fun outfits, acts clumsy, and feels completely at ease because he's by your side. Let's discuss. <laughs> Ladies first. Oh, he's gearing up, though. <laughs> I was getting ready to record before you got here and I was fixing my makeup because I didn't have time this morning to like do do my makeup, you know? Okay. So just like half did my makeup and I was doing my eyes earlier and I don't know what happened. Did you see my story? I don't know what happened, but like, I, I don't know, the mascara one like slipped out of my hand. What? Yeah. And the wand like hit my face as it fell. And I had this like huge mascara blotch like underneath my eye, like on the top of my cheekbone, like right there. And I was like, are you kidding me? Oh no. Are you kidding me? So what did you do? Did, did you have to like just start over or like? No, I'd rather, I would cancel to be honest. Before I would like go and take all my makeup off and then do my skincare routine again and then do a full face of makeup again only to immediately wash it off and do my skincare routine again when we're done. That's too much. That sounded like a struggle. It would have been. It would have been. So what did you no, do? So, okay. So, so the trick is you let it dry instead of trying to like wipe it off when it's still wet because then yeah. it just like smudges. Um, and then you take a clean spoolie brush and you just like really lightly like kind of Flake go over top and it like flakes off. Yeah. And then you can just like touch up your actual makeup. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Mm hmm. Okay. Have but you it was like I watched it all happen in slow motion. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would suck. It was. It was actually good on my pants too. Oh. I know. But the pants, we'd prefer the pants. The pants or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been doing a bride's makeup and they started crying when you've like finished? Like yes. face, like, that must be so stressful. Yes, I mean yes and no. Like I know that they're gonna cry that day, so like it is what it is. Yeah. But like when I've just finished, though, like, like at least give me a minute. You know what I mean? <laughs> so what do you do? Do you just let it dry off? Yeah. Okay. Does it? And then you have to like blur it back out. Mm-hmm. You gotta wait till they stop because if the waterworks are still going, yeah, you know, I don't think I should. If I ever get married, I shouldn't do my makeup on it. I'm gonna be a mess. I cry for everything now. No, but like I could just picture being dehydrated by the end of the day. (laughs) Water loss, literally (laughs) via the eyes. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly, it would be rough. No, you will be. You might be a case (laughs) where it's like middle of the day. Go wash your face, skincare routine, start from scratch. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Actually, you should just work that into the timeline of your day. Skincare breaks. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. And also just social battery recharges. Yeah. Like the, the thought of people staring at me, walking down an aisle, having to talk to everyone. Uh, mm-hmm. ugh. Yeah. The glass clinking thing, I hate that. Oh. That is not happening at my wedding. That Ever. should be canceled. It, no, that should done. be canceled along with um, garter tosses. Okay, but wait. If the I don't mind tossing the garter, I just don't want you to have to go fish it up from under my skirt. That's what I mean. But, but I'm just. But thinking, if you like, don't do, do that, the then what's can, the point like, of a can, garter can toss? Can we throw a, gir- a boutonniere for like one of the guys, like one of their corsage thingies, and then throw the bouquet for the girls? I don't even know oh, how I feel about yeah. bouquet tosses, but I just feel like everyone likes them. I don't yeah. really want anybody to have my bouquet. Like it's mine. Yeah. I would actually be that person that orders a separate bouquet for the Oh, that's the toss. thing. People do that. Okay. Yeah. No, they get like a smaller, more simple, like not as elaborate and expensive okay. version. I was like, why am I tossing my bouquet? And toss that. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I saw the cutest thing the other day. It was one of those like wedding videos. Yes. And the bride, she got, like when she was ordering 
the flowers, you're going to cry, aren't you? Go ahead. <laughs> She's going to cry. Like, oh. Go She's ahead. Just go. Just speak. Okay, so fine. she, all of her flowers were white for the bridesmaids, mm-hmm. but she picked a different flower for each of the bridesmaid based on like, like what the flower like means or whatever, and like how she felt about them or like their personality or whatever. So, so it was all like cohesive looking, like they were all white, but like one had white roses and like one had baby's breath, and then the other had like white calla lilies and like that kind of thing, you know. I love. That. It was actually so cute. I love that idea. That's so cute. All right. I Do you know sometimes I'm like I don't know if I this okay this is gonna sound so bad. No, okay. maybe I should say. No, say it, say it, say it, say it. No, wait. Say it. It's going to make me sound bad. Say it anyway. If it's that bad, we just won't put it in. Okay. I Sometimes I wonder if I actually want to get married or if I just want a wedding. Oh, that's fine. But I feel like that sounds... That doesn't make you sound bad. Because I know I actually, like, like, if that is what God has for me, I would love it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I'm like, hey, if I don't get married... Can I just throw a wedding like party? And I'd be happy. I don't even think yeah. I care about the fact that I have no man. Yeah, Which I don't bad. see why not. I feel like I'll that throw you a bad. wedding. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> why not? I just it it wouldn't be a bad. wedding, though. I, that's why I said no, a wedding like party. A, it, would be a, it would be a white party. A celebration of something. A white party? Yeah. I love white parties. Yeah. What is a white party? Ku Klux Klan. Like everyone <laughs> black girl throwing a white party no it's where it's everyone, everyone wears white. white oh yeah oh i saw this other that doesn't one sound fun at all it's just a party where everyone's wearing white yeah the what party is just a party what do you eat food then? food with all the white on it well just don't be a klutz klutzes can't control that <laughs> that's true <laughs> I would have, if I threw a white party, I would have a bin of like to go tied to go. I was going to say, like, just have a, a bowl of tied to go. Like yeah. maybe over by where the drinks are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. see why not. Before we go further, mm-hmm. let's intro because we will get carried away. And then you could tell me what Robert else was that you saw. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. You should do that. <sighs> why do I have to take such a big, deep breath every <laughs> single time? I'm like, because <gasps> you have to like, what's over there? Embrace yourself. <laughs> Smash that, Smash like, that button. like button. <laughs> Give us a like. You're probably wondering how I got here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Every cringy YouTuber ever. Okay. Ugh. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Big Girl Panty. It's the podcast where faith meets real life, and we dive into the heart of womanhood. We're your hosts. I'm Shayna. That's Priya. And we invite you to join us on embracing the messy, the complicated, and the beautiful aspects of life through a Christian lens and put on our Big Girl Panties to tackle the tough stuff together. I hear this is episode 12, so strides are being made. Look at us go. Yeah. We're on a roll. We are. I love this for us. I actually do, too. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like we're on a roll? Kind of. Maybe. I don't really know what a roll is supposed to feel like for this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, I just feel like I'm having a conversation with my best friend, which I would have done anyway. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of the whole point. Which is the point. So I guess we're on a roll. True. TBD. Let us know if we're on a roll, I guess. <laughs> or don't. I don't know. Are we on a roll? Don't freak out. <laughs> I know you're already like, oh my gosh, what does we, that mean? Are we on a roll? <laughs> Is this a roll? What is a roll? <laughs> Let's not unpack if you're on a roll or not. <laughs> she was ready. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Ugh. So wait, tell me what it was, and then I believe you had a little something for us. Oh, okay. So I saw this other one and it was um it was just like videos of like the guests like sitting and like milling about during cocktail hour and whatever yeah but it was like when the bride sends out an invitation and like the dress code or whatever just says pink encouraged it was so freaking cool (laughs) I love that. Yeah. Because it was like people were wearing like different shades of pink and like different like combinations of pink. And you had guys wearing like normal suits, but then like their ties had like a little bit of like a pink floral in it or something like that. You know what I mean? But then you had other people in like pink dresses and like it was it was so cool. It was really yeah. cool. I would be the type of bride to, to give a dress code, but like an aesthetic dress code, not just like black tie. Mm, okay. Like, what would you say? I would send a mood board. 
because I have different ideas. Like, I feel like, you know, you almost like don't want to give it away because what if I decide I want to do one of these? But like, I won't be getting married for a long time, I'm sure. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I had this one idea where, but they're all based on where I am. Like, for mm-hmm. example, if I did a destination wedding in the mountains of Utah, and it would That's have to take so place specific. at like sunset, right? Okay. So that it's like golden hour, everything's a flame. Mm-hmm. But I would have everyone, all my guests come as my something blue. So the idea would oh, be that all my guests so are in cute. blue. And I just think that would look so good with that backdrop. But that would be cute too. Dress code, something blue. Right. But I just want to make sure that people don't show up in like... I Neon green. No, but just like, like come correct. I, I don't know. I just, and I like mood boards. Mm-hmm. Like I, I've made mood boards. One time I planned somebody's bachelorette and I, I almost sent out a mood board to explain to the girls what they needed to wear <laughs> for the slumber party. <laughs> and, slumber I, party. and then I held myself back. I pajamas really is not going to cut it. <laughs> no, because I ha- we had a specific vision and I was really close. Oh I made the mood board. I you attached would. it. And then I looked and I said, Shayna, calm down. That and is so it. you. That it is was so such you. Good mood board. And then I like was ordering cookies for somebody else's event and I sent the baker a whole two page mood board, like a Canva. And they were like, okay, bet. Like, thank you. <laughs> like I will go in because I just need to make sure that you're understanding what I'm understanding. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As somebody who would be making a product like that for a party, I think that I would actually appreciate that because then I have a really good idea of what, what you want. exactly you're looking for. Mm-hmm. As opposed to like, I kind of know, but I'm also just like shooting in the dark. Yeah. I love mood boards. Like sometimes but I But make... for a pajama party? Well, I like, didn't dress send code, it. That's I didn't send funny. it. But it was a good mood board. I believe you. Yeah. I believe you. Thank you. That's really funny. I think with weddings, my biggest pet peeve is when people come, specifically guys, come in jeans or they're like dressed up. Go back and try again. But they're wearing a hat, like a baseball hat. A baseball? Because mm-hmm. I'm like, a nice fedora could be a moment. No, no, that's different. Guy. I'm talking like, like a, a hat. Yeah. What's the issue with that? What? What is the issue with it? What isn't the issue with that? Okay. It's a wedding. It's just that baseball caps are not, not a backyard barbecue. Attire. It brings down the average. Mm. It does bring down the average. It does. It's just not appropriate. It's something for we the are the not event. want to do. Yeah. Why it's not a- it, what makes it not appropriate? Because a, a wedding, unless specifically stated that it's casual this is casual this is literally a backyard barbecue like we're having a hoedown <laughs> it, it just gives the idea that you didn't really respect respect it. the occasion yeah it's respect for the occasion and what it represents like it's like how like you take off your hat to pray. Like I just feel like it gives the same energy. I don't yeah. know how to explain it. I just understand. So, or, so you have an issue with people wearing hats in church? For me specifically, that's different. I don't. So a wedding deserves more reverence than God? It's not about reverence. Respect than God? I don't know how I, I feel about hats in church. It depends on the type of hat. Baseball hat. Um, I don't know how I feel about, like, again, like, if we're praying, I just think if a guy's wearing a hat, they should take it off. Why? I just feel like it's a respectful thing to do. I think it's probably a thing on how I was raised, though. No, I was raised the same way, so that's fair. I think I'm, I'm a little bit more indifferent. Mm-hmm. Like, I think if a guy were to do that, to take it off, I would probably notice and be like, oh, like, that's, that's cool. Yeah, like I good would never for him. Tell somebody to stop praying. But if or, a like, guy, interrupt, yeah, but if like, a guy hears. like didn't take it off when he started to pray or when someone else started to pray or whatever, I I probably wouldn't think twice about it. Hmm. I would clock it, I think, but I just I also don't think I would say anything because at the end of the day, like God mm-hmm. does not need my hat on or off. Like right, He's God. I think it's more of just a if there's things that we do that show signs of respect. I think if the occasion calls for respect, why not do it? Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway. I think with weddings, though, it's a specific, like, 
there's just like an understood dress code that like this is a like a celebratory momentous it's usually fancy. thing like, that is fancy that's that's formal yeah they are fancier than church yeah like so i think because of that like a hat does not fit into that dress code it just doesn't mm-hmm. neither do jeans so you had an issue with my grandpa's hat at our wedding no but that was a hat but that was a fedora we're talking about which are like typically worn a Yankee with baseball cap or like a champion like yeah. Nike cap like the hat that you we wear with jeans and a fedoras. t-shirt we're fine yeah it's just like let the hat be a little bit elevated enough mm-hmm. you know what I mean or just leave it at home that too yeah comb your hair just it's different Go get a haircut. Yeah. I think guys getting a haircut is the equivalent of girls getting their nails done for an event. Don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah no, like a guy with agree. a fresh haircut. I don't agree at all. You don't think so? I don't really? think guys look at girls' nails the way girls look at guys' haircuts. No, but I'm not talking no. about how we view it for each other. I'm saying the way a girl is like, oh, I have to go to this event. Let me get my nails done. I feel like a guy's like, oh, I have to go to this event. Let me get my hair get done. Get a haircut. I, like, I don't get my nails done thinking, guys, I don't care if a guy sees my nails. Yeah. I probably won't. I know that. Nails specifically? Yeah, no, I've never thought. Like, that is I get me. my nails done because I feel like polished. Mm-hmm. No pun intended. <laughs> I'm saying that like, I think that the way a girl's like, oh, event nails. A guy's like, event haircut. That's what I mean. Gotcha. I would agree. Yeah. I think nails are like, I don't want to say, well, they can be an accessory. They As can I be look an accessory. at my very undone nails right now. <laughs> look, I just got my nails done. They're cute. Aren't they? They're so simple. Nude is good. Nude is so good. Nude this is, is the bubble best. bath by OPI. Mm. Whoever Classic. did that did a work. And you know what? I would have guessed that too. Yeah. Like I literally would have looked at that and been like, bubble bath? That's either bubble bath or some combination of bubble funny bath bunny and, and like funny bunny or, or yeah or something yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's good what, anyway what do you what does getting your nails done do for you you want to go first how do i explain it you know okay can i while you think can mm-hmm. i just for me it's a combination of things one i just like it as a little self-care activity it's just something that you just, you go, you do. It's like you're getting pampered for a little bit. I find it fun. Second, I just find that it helps my, like my hands, my whole overall appearance. Like it just looks put together a bit more. And I just like that look. Like it, it gives classy. It gives grown. Like I just like it for that. Mm-hmm. And in the event that, I mean, I'm rarely going to get a design. It's just not really my vibe. But in the event that I do, it's just like, it's just something fun. It's just like the silly little fun thing that you do and it gives you a little joy. Like you look down and you're like, oh, look, they're so fun. It's just like, I do think it's an accessory. It's just like a fun little thing to do. Yeah. But mostly for me, it's like a self-care thing. I think for me, it's a self-care thing. And I also think that, again, not to like <laughs> polish, haha, but I do think that that is a big part of it for me. It like I, I like how it just kind it of like completes everything. Yep. Like... When you put on a really good outfit mm. and you have your nails done, it hits different mm-hmm. compared to when you put on the same outfit and you don't have your nails done. It's true. And like it doesn't even have to be like I'm not talking about like the long not nails, like like, <laughs> like nails, like claws, you know what I mean? Like I'm yeah, <laughs> nails. <laughs> like they can be short. They can be. Yeah. Short nails are cute too. But I think short nails are great. Yeah. But just, like, done. Yeah. It just puts you together overall. Mm-hmm. Even, like, a naked Manny. Yeah. I love a good There's naked Manny. There's just something about your, your hands looking clean. It, it makes you, know you what look it is? clean. You know what it is? Your cuticles need to be in check. I'll, I'll give you that. And the shape needs to be even. If yeah. the shape is even and your cuticles are in check. It just looks like you take care of You yourself. don't have to have the polish or the gel or whatever it happens to be. You no. can get away without it. I agree. You just buff them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I just think it helps you look put together and clean and like you take care of yourself, mm-hmm. which is something that we... Okay, like. you know what I feel like we're doing right now? What? You know, in High School Musical 1. <laughs> what? Is it High School Musical 1? I think so. When Gabriella and um, 
um Monique. oh my gosh yeah monique are like walking into no but what's her why am i having is a brain fart not, right now is that her actual name monique why can't i remember her character name taylor thank Ta- you not ej giving us <gasps> i'm a big high school musical and this is oh. why we need you here good work it's a sir. good thing you're here EJ saves the day. It's the passion in which you just said that. I loved it. It's true. Okay, Taylor. Sorry, I was thinking about her actual name. No, I was too. Um, yeah, when they're like walking into the school at the beginning of the movie and they're like making fun of the cheerleaders and she's like, like, we have to talk about the importance of proper cuticle care. Oh, do you remember yeah. that? Yes, I That's do us right that. now. That was us. She actually said nail beds, but you got it. Yeah. No, it was nail beds and cuticle care, wasn't it? It was just nail beds. Yeah. And then she shows her and she goes, sister. And then they were in it. Yeah. I so badly want to like insert that clip right now just to, to make sure we're right. But anyway. No, I know you're right. Oh my gosh. That's yeah, hilarious. That's anyway, I think we've talked about yeah, cuticles let's talk enough. Yeah, let's thing. Let me find the thing. Okay. So what is it exactly that you have for us as you find it? <sighs> I found a video. Wait. Is this the scenario or is this our main topic? Because then we need to do VGP moment. Oh, you yeah. I forgot about the VGP moment. You did this twice in a row. Okay. What is your VGP moment this week, Miss Ma'am? <laughs> okay. Let's start there. <laughs> Whoops. I was like, why did she Me? do that with such vigor and vitality? I was like, what Getting is happening? Getting ahead of myself. That's true. I literally did that the last episode. You did. Um, My VGP moment. Um, I am having a week where trusting god is like a active daily thing and not just like a yeah i do i trust god i trust him Mm. okay so you're learning dependence yeah Mm. yeah there's like yeah a couple things that i was like really hoping for and kind of working on that didn't pan out the way that i wanted them to um, which is disappointing for me because like, you know, me and my humanness thought that it was going to be like a really, really great thing, but obviously God knows. And I don't, <laughs> so clearly there was something that I don't know there. Um, and there's something better somewhere else. So I'm just trusting on that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Which I don't love because I have no control over it, but. And we did talk about control last We did week. talk about that. Yeah. Ain't it just like God <laughs> to say, oh, let me <laughs> refine you real Watch quick. Watch this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you said it's like a daily thing. What does that actually look like for you on the daily? So I heard somebody say. How did they phrase it? It was something along the lines of like, like work as if everything depends on you and pray as if everything depends on God. Hmm. Um, and so that's kind of what I've been doing in relation to this thing. Okay. Yeah. So like, you know, doing what I can, um, But just knowing that, like, obviously at the end of the day, (laughs) it hurts coming out of my mouth. (laughs) Your will, not mine. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. So just, like, trusting for whatever God's way is that he's going to work that thing out. Um, Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm excited for you. (laughs) Because, because I think that when you get to that place where it's so uncomfortable and you you have nowhere, you, you like you got nothing. It's just like okay, God, like then you're in surrender, mm-hmm. and surrender is where amazing things happen. Mm-hmm. And so I am excited for you. Thanks. And I know that whatever He has for you is, I mean, immeasurably more than what you would have had for yourself. Yeah. And I love that for you. Thanks. And we love that for God. Yeah. Won't He do it? Yeah. So good. Okay. Yeah. That's me. What about you? Um, for me, I had it before I came in and I'm having a bit of a brain fart. Give me one sec. Okay. Oh, yes. (laughs) (laughs) 
It's been a long day. Okay. I know. So I, this week I, I had an opportunity where um, in working with some of my clients, I, I'll, I'll preface by saying it, it is really difficult being in that therapist position because it's so easy to start to feel like the recovery and the well-being of the people that you're treating is explicitly on you. Mm -hmm. Um, And I found myself in that position where it was like, well, if I don't see the improvement that I want to be seeing in them, it's on me. Um, Which, first of all, reality check, if I see somebody for less than 1% of their week, how do I expect their improvement to be on Mm me? Um, I'm there to coach, but I'm not there to like I can't change mm-hmm. them otherwise I would have everybody out in one session you know um but I was kind of in that headspace and I was like lord like I'm just feeling really down and feeling really like it makes me question am I actually a good therapist am I good at this like sh- like just am I good at this really um and I I was praying about it I was kind of sad about it and just feeling a little like overwhelmed with some of the stuff that I was dealing with. And one of my clients just all of a sudden out of nowhere, obviously unsolicited, gave me just some really wonderful feedback in one of our sessions. And Mm. just the stuff that they said to me on, on how they felt working with me was just like the affirmation that I needed. And I was like, Lord, thank you. Well, first of all, for showing up when we, when I need you to and, and like using somebody to speak life into me, um, even though I'm there to do that for them, like they totally did it for me. And I was so thankful. Um, but it also again, just made me so thankful that even though, yes, I'm like in the therapist role and they're in, in the client role, um, we're both humans and it is so cool that I get to connect with humans on such a vulnerable level every day and just like share and be a part of their story and all that stuff. And so it was just, there's a lot of gratitude that came out of that, Mm -hmm. but also just thank you God that you use literally anybody to speak life into your children when they need it. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was mine. That's so cool. Yeah. That was really great. That's really cool. Cause I know you're good at what you do. Thank you. I know you are, but I can imagine in that moment like I mean you could have gotten that encouragement from anybody but I feel like it would have been particularly meaningful specifically because it came from one of your clients it was that's really cool yeah Hmm. Mm so that was that it's good getting those like uh like those little like pick me up kind of moments when you need them that are like affirming like yes you are doing the right thing yes you are supposed to be here yes this is meaningful yes there is like you know meaning and like lasting Mm -hmm. impact and purpose yeah to to what you're doing yeah it it is it is so it is so needed and it's not a bad thing to need that Mm -hmm. because again we're human yeah you do want that extra affirmation to know you are doing the right thing. You are doing a good job. But even with that, it reminds me even more um, the responsibility that I have as a fellow human to when I see somebody doing a good job, speak life into them, tell them that they're doing a good job. Say, Oh, like I appreciate that you did this. Or I I noticed that you're working hard at that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think sometimes we can be like, I don't want to sound weird or they probably know or, you know, just let it lie. Like, we don't think that our words matter as much as they do. But we have so much power in the things that we say and how it impacts other people, too. So mm-hmm. it's just like lots of reminders hmm. in there. That's beautiful. Yeah. You know, it's funny. That reminds me of... Um, I never used this as my BGP moment a couple of weeks ago, and I totally could have. Ooh. But exclusive. But now that I'm thinking about it... Because this, this reminded me. I had a... Um, a wedding that I was doing yeah. makeup for a couple weeks ago. And um, like them as people, like they were all lovely. Like it had nothing to do with them. But like I just, I just wasn't in like the best mood that day. 
I didn't totally want to be there. <laughs> and it was a little bit of like a, like, what am I doing? Like, it's another wedding, like, bleh, kind of thing. Mm. Um, and I was, I was starting on one of the bridesmaids and she, you know, we were like doing our little consult before I got started. And she was telling me about these like little breakouts that she was getting, um, on her face. And she's like, I just really want to make sure that like those are covered. I, I, I never break out. Like this is, this is a new thing. Like this is like now. And I was like, okay, let's, that's fine. I'm not concerned. Like no problem. So I did her makeup and she looked after in the mirror and she was like, Oh my gosh, like I, I love it. Like my skin looks like really good. Like, thank you so much, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I was actually really like now I'm so happy and relieved, but I was actually really concerned about the way that my skin was going to look because I never break out. She's like, I actually miscarried two days ago and she's like, I'm still like actively miscarrying. And so like my body, like hormones and like, you know, all that kind of stuff are totally out of whack. And, and that's why like these, these breakouts are here and everything. And she's like, I feel like so good in this moment like better than I've felt like the last several days for obvious reasons and I uh, it was um yeah it got me and I was like okay similar I guess you know all right yeah thanks God. I was supposed to be here all right thanks, okay Jesus. thank you yes <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 those kind of yeah those moments are really beautiful that is beautiful like mm -hmm. bittersweet yeah but, oh, like, wow. what an honor to be a part of somebody's story and help them in some kind of way. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Just different. Yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. It was very special. Wow. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you shared that. I didn't even remember it until right now. Really? Yeah. Like, oh, as, like, a, as like a BGP moment kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even think about it. I think that just, again, also says so much about when we feel like we don't want to be somewhere or it's like, oh, I just, I could be doing this. I'm tired. I'm this. I'm that. While, yes, there's a certain extent that I'm always going to say, like, actually check in with yourself and be like, do I actually need rest or am I just dragging my feet right now? If you're just dragging your feet, something that I try to think about is, what blessing does God have for me or for someone else that the devil is trying to block by me not being there? Mm -hmm. Because I truly believe that in the smallest ways these things happen. And like, for example, with that, she's going through one of the most awful things you could go through. And she got to have a moment where she, she felt beautiful. She felt okay in that moment. It's already hard to be celebrating for somebody when you're going through something so mm -hmm. awful. And like in that moment, she felt okay. Yeah. And if you like, I mean, okay, I know you can't just up and be like, sorry, I can't come because like, you, you know, you scheduled <laughs> it. <laughs> but I'm just saying like, sometimes we really do get that feeling where it's like, I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. and it's like, no, but what does God have for you there? If you go, whether for yourself or for somebody else, somebody which, else. if it's for somebody else, it's also for yourself always. Yeah. Which is the cool thing. Yeah. Ugh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah, it was a, it was a good moment. And it sounds like that was a really really good moment too yeah it was yeah. <laughs> okay okay now should i talk about the thing go ahead all right you can proceed <sighs> okay i found this video <laughs> say it with some enthusiasm where most of our <laughs> good conversations start <laughs> i found this video on tiktok yeah okay i found this video and <laughs> it's this the like text on the screen, whatever says, um, when his masculine energy is so high that you transform from a strong, independent woman into a playful, carefree girl who says silly things, laughs loudly, wears fun outfits, acts clumsy, and feels completely at ease because he's by your side. Let's discuss. <laughs> Ladies first. Oh, he's gearing up, though. 
<laughs> you took the biggest sip of water. I, know, I was literally just gonna say, so the way you sip that water. Throat. Actually, actually, before you start, can you cut the AC on? It's hot in here. I'm dying. Are you okay? It's very hot. All right. One sec. You guys are not hot. Okay, I'm gonna read it again. Sorry. To, like, just paint the picture even more. The video behind this is a girl in like a long gown getting into what looks to be a very nice car. It's blurry, so I can't tell. It's giving a Lamborghini. But then there's <laughs> but then there's the man who is like holding the door open for her while she gets in this car. I mean, aside from the whole conversation we're having, King. But anyway, continue. Great. Love it. Love to see it. Yes. Yes. But okay. So it says when his masculine energy is so high that you transform from a strong, independent woman into a playful, carefree girl who says silly things, laughs loudly, wears fun outfits, acts clumsy, and feels completely at ease because he's by your side. Okay. Let's get into it. Okay. So what were your initial thoughts? Like, why did you feel it was pod worthy? Let's start <sighs> Well, it, my initial thoughts were a few, actually. What, <laughs> they Go were ahead. threefold. <laughs> actually, they might have actually been, <laughs> to be honest. <honest-ist>. Okay, go <laughs> ahead. Lay, lay them on me, sis. Let's go. Okay, one, the wording was weird to me. Like, specifically, the wording was weird to me. Almost in, like, a concerning kind of a way. Like, mm-hmm. like this feels uncomfortable. Um, like, transforming from a strong, independent woman, woman, into a playful, carefree girl. So, she's... Uno reverse. Reverting to childhood. Like... Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what it was giving, especially because of, like, the adjectives used beforehand. Strong, independent woman transforming into a playful, carefree girl. Like, it's just that was bizarre to me. Like, as if playful or carefree can't also apply to someone who is, like, a fully functioning, like, has a good head on her shoulders, can function as an adult (laughs) woman (laughs) Mm -hmm. right um do you have your head on your shoulders if you're carefree well i think you can be carefree in a (laughs) appropriate (laughs) kind of a way like not carefree as in like airheaded well i don't think that that's what carefree is at all yeah carefree as in like unencumbered with like needless worries (laughs) <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> like not weighed down by like worrying about like needless things or like things that are beyond your control, for example, or Is that what carefree is? Or are you defining carefree? I mean, I wasn't planning to define carefree. Are you trying to define carefree? What? <laughs> What? <laughs> what? I'm asking, is that what carefree means? Or are you coming up with your own definition? I'm confused. Carefree. Thank you. <laughs> Free from anxiety or responsibility. I think there's... Interesting. My mind immediately goes to... Oh, I can't remember where the verse is taken from. But you know where it's like, do not worry about what you will eat or what you will wear. Mm-hmm. I thought about that, too. I thought about it in, like, a biblical sense. Well, I think that's the only way that somebody could actually be carefree. Like, if we're being, like, Mm -hmm. real talk, carefree would imply that you've given your burdens to Christ. Right. I don't think you could... I 1,000% disagree. I don't think that you could have, care like, true, actual carefreeness without that. I don't think you can. You could have the counterfeit of it. I think we're conflating worries with care. I think, as Christians, we're supposed to have care. Take care in what you do, but don't worry. But I don't think that that's what care is in this sense. 
Because if we think about in the Bible, cast your worries unto Jesus for he cares for you or cast your burdens for he cares for you. It, it says like there's different versions. Cast your worries, cast your cares, cast your burdens. The three words can be used interchangeably. I don't think, I don't think that it needs to be careless in terms of I think you're thinking of like like, you know, somebody just knocking things around like you like you don't care. Like no, you're I'm just talking, like I'm, being I'm going off that definition you read free from anxiety or responsibility. I think we're we're called to have responsibility. Mm-hmm. Anxiety. I, I think you're taking this too literal. How? When I okay, what is your understanding of carefree? My understanding is what she read. So free from worry carefree. Or I'll, I'll give you an example. Free from anxiety, or I'll give you an example. Um, my bill is due. My rent is due tomorrow. It's my rent is nine hundred bucks. I have Wouldn't that be nice? Whatever. Praise God. Wow. I have I have a thousand bucks in my account. I really want to buy Chris Brown tickets. <laughs> Carefree. Mm-hmm. I'll figure it out. And I buy the tickets. That is getting rid That's of your responsibility. That's not being carefree. That's just That's being irresponsible. irresponsible. But based on the definition, it's free from context. responsibility. Free from but responsibility. I, I just think you're taking it into the wrong context. I feel like you guys are not using the right context. Is no, it free from free from needless responsibility or free from all it responsibility? Just says free from anxiety or responsibility. But what I'm saying is when we read definitions, we have to apply some like I don't know what the word is, discernment here in terms of like we will always have responsibility. Well, we're called, to be, we're called to be good stewards of things. Exactly. Right? So, so that if, implies. If that implies, that like by being, definition, you have to then have responsibility in order to be a good sort of But that responsibility here. should never enslave you. And that's why we're called to cast our burdens. Mm-hmm. If I cast my burdens unto Jesus, that does not mean that I don't care about anything anymore. I still have to deal with the problem at hand, but I can deal with it walking in the freedom of whatever happens, God's got me and he's good and I don't have to worry. It doesn't mean I don't do anything. I still have to figure it out with his help, but I can have the assurance that it's gonna be okay. What's the definition of care? There's probably several. Is there another definition of carefree? That was the only one. Okay. Um, Care, the provision of what is necessary for the health, welfare, maintenance, and protection of someone or something. Serious attention or consideration applied to doing something correctly to avoid damage or risk. To feel concern or interest, attach importance to something, and to look after and provide for the needs of. Many definitions. I think we're supposed to take care. (laughs) I don't think we should ever be carefree. No, but wait. I found another definition, though. According to Mm Merriam-Webster, free from care, such as having no worries or troubles. So, for example, they spent a carefree day at the lake. That, to me, is what we were saying, right? It's not that you don't care about anything or that you don't have responsibility, but, it doesn't but it's the difference you. between worries or troubles. It, like it says that specifically. Is that okay? I'm not going to get into a semantic battle. I <laughs> continue. I will follow your definition for the sake okay. of conversation. Okay. Fair. I think okay. in this context specifically, with everything else that said in this like video the word carefree to me comes across as like like you're just like not fully (laughs) functioning (laughs) like because it says um who says silly things acts clumsy so to me, when I put the word carefree with those two other things, then I'm forming a picture of somebody who's just like, la, 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 like it's your, it's ditzy. ditzy. Okay. Yeah. It, it fits in my description <laughs> of carefree. Right. How, how they're right. describing right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I, to, okay, so again, getting back to the video specifically, that's concerning to me because one, if we're going to talk about biblical womanhood, um, that's not it. <laughs> like we know that much. That's not it. I think in like a practical sense, it's very like strange to me, like that contrast of referring to yourself as a woman, but as once being a woman, but now a girl, like it feels like weird, like infantilization almost, which is kind of icky. Um, and I think it also gives this idea that like, you can't be a strong, independent woman, but also be fun, but also laugh, but also wear fun outfits, but also like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like one or the other and it's like rigid, like you're either this or you're that. And I just, that's just silly to me. I don't, I don't understand that. And then the idea that like all of that would be taking a place and you're throwing out all sense of like responsibility or like self-awareness or like awareness of your surroundings or whatever it happens to be because there's a man beside you. Not just a man, extra masculinity, man. Mojo Dojo Casa, man. Yeah, because you got Ken standing right over there. Like, like a Tylenol 3. <laughs> what? That's the extra strength. Extra strength. Yeah, I just... Mm. I don't know. And I think that it's concerning to me because, like, I feel like the conversation right now about, um, you know, being in your, like, feminine energy is, like, such a popular conversation right now. <sighs> And to be clear, like, I don't have, um, like, I'm not like a million percent hard and fast against the idea of that, but I think it just feels concerning to me when like, this is the kind of direction that that conversation is taking because it just feels unnecessary and unhealthy and like, there is an extreme that maybe people like who make this video, for example, are like landing on. And it just has me like, uh. okay. <laughs> I don't think that was meant to be the landing place. <laughs> yeah. I do think that you're correct in the idea of, we can often go to like the polarized extremes. And I think that comes from, women have come from a place in more recent times where it was very like you do it all. You don't need no man. You don't need nobody. Mm -hmm. You just put your head you down. Me do the work. Yeah. Like girl boss era. Mm -hmm. um, and I think women are tired, but in an effort to kind of draw us back to like, okay, like you can be independent and do all the things like girl boss, rah, rah, rah. Um, I, I think in an effort to try to pull back from that, it we just get polarized to the other extreme, which is like mm -hmm. soft life. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to work. You don't need to this. Let's you all don't be need tried to lives. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, but to be fair, that's not really describing a trad wife either. No, no, it's not. Which but trad wife, mm -hmm. traditional wife, somebody who's like, you know, let's say stays at home, does mm -hmm. the homemaking. That's not that either. Yeah. Agreed. I think it's interesting how things inevitably swing to the opposite extreme. Cause it's not like everything does that mm -hmm. everything like, um, like makeup trends do that. Like think of like where we all were in 2016. Okay. How we were all doing our makeup. Like it was full coverage, matte finish, you were wearing like the Kat Von D locket foundation, which smelt like paint thinner and had the consistency of like <laughs> spackle. Oh my Lord. <laughs> we were doing like, spackle? yes, that stuff was disgusting. It's terrifying. But we like 
yeah, I went nuts for it. We were doing like the really dark, intense, blocky eyebrows. You know, we were doing like glitter cut creases with like winged liner on a Tuesday morning. And now here we are in like our clean girl era. And it's like skin tints and like feathered eyebrows <laughs> and faux freckles like, I love it. and lip oils. Like that's what we're, do- you know, like home decor trends. We went from like minimalism and now maximalism is a thing like it's just so interesting to me that everything goes through trends of being on the extreme and it just like kind of flip flops back and forth. And so with this, you're right. Like for the longest time, it's been, you don't need no man. Men are trash. Like all you need is you like just girl boss your way through it kind of thing. And now, yeah, that we're going to the opposite extreme where it's like <laughs> this. Yeah. I don't want to think for myself anymore. I yeah. just want to be ditzy and laugh all day. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Again, we just come back to the whole idea of there's always counterfeits for things. Um, because it, it's just like, if we were to settle into that, right? Not much would get done. <laughs> If we were to settle into what we were before, not much did get done because everyone got burnt out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think it's interesting that, how would I phrase this? Like the roles for feminism or what, not feminism, the roles for what femininity is change, but that's clearly just socially. I, I want to understand like what is actual femininity in this because I think there's some things that are true in there like I think if you are with if you are with a guy that is truly let's say in his masculine okay well this is just doing what he's supposed to do biblically yes Bib- yeah if we're thinking about this from a Christian context which yeah, of course we are as being the man are. that he's supposed to be right right um and in a sense this is giving in a very thwarted way the idea of I guess submission or being led. But I'm just saying again, it's funny how we always end up coming back to that because it's designed, but we do it wrong. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause this is sure she might, it's like, I'm being led. Like I don't have to pay attention. I don't have to anything like my man's got it, whatever. Like love that for you sis. Great. But at the end of the day, that's not what we're called to do. We're, if your man is doing that, yay for him. But we are called to more than to just sit there and be like tagged along. Yeah. Like we're supposed to be helping. And I think that's just the key piece that we tend to miss. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of this comes down to, I guess I'll say selfishness in terms of on the one extreme, it's like, okay, if I'm going to be that strong, independent woman, I am being selfish because it's just about me. And if I swing this other way and I'm like in my ultra soft feminine era, I also am being selfish because it's all about me. In which scenario are we helping? In which scenario are we saying, okay, like I'm going to be industrious. I'm going to take charge, but I'm also doing it from a position in which we are tag teaming and we're working together. Mm -hmm. I agree. Do you think that there's a difference between um, like femininity and womanhood? Hmm. because I feel like I mean we were using the term before like biblical femininity and I wonder is that actually a thing or is what we should be talking about biblical womanhood because when I think about femininity I think about like the stereotypical like girly kinds of things the dresses, the hairstyles, the the makeup, like the the presentation of womanhood, right? But womanhood to me, I think of like the character traits, the personality traits, the like all of those kinds of things that like as women, you know, we're 
supposed to be supposed to do. Like I think of like the Proverbs 31 woman, for example, like, like it was her character that was being described, not necessarily just like the dresses that she wore and that she had in her closet kind of thing. Right. And I feel like maybe part of the problem is that those two things have gotten crossed when you know, we should be talking about womanhood, but we're actually talking about femininity. And maybe that's where part of the problem comes with, um, you know, in churches, for example, like, you know, women have to wear dresses. You know, if you're going to be like a proper woman, you have to wear dresses. And if you wear pants too much, <laughs> you know, we're like the, the, like that narrative that like women are supposed to have long hair or like, do you know what I'm saying? Like those kinds of things. If you, don't present in a feminine enough kind of way, then you're somehow being a woman wrong Mm. or you're not being enough of a woman or whatever it happens to be. Um, And to me, I just don't think that that's the case. I mean, I don't know of anywhere in the Bible where it says as a woman, you need to have your nails done. (laughs) You know, you should be wearing makeup. Um, You can't wear pants. Um, And you need to have X amount of dresses in your closet. And at least two of them need to be pink. Do you know what I mean? But what I do see is like character traits being described, like things that are actually like that have depth and substance to them and that leave a lasting impact and that are valuable to me that's kind of the the real point and I feel like because those two things have gotten confused maybe that in part is what has led us to like videos like this being made where you're either a strong woman or you're a carefree girl (laughs) Yeah, I think this is going to sound super alphabet club, but follow me. I I think as a whole, and I guess maybe it's North America. I can't speak to other places, but I think that we put way too much stock into being men and women. Like explain like. I think the issue with the narrative today of I don't subscribe to gender and all these things, right? I think the issue is that we've made our sexuality, our identities, (laughs) and it's almost become political, right? You're describing character, right? But before, when uh, Shana mentioned something about masculinity and your response was he's just being a man of god he's just being the man he's supposed to be right so wouldn't that be the same for women like i feel like the word masculinity and and femininity are kind of like what are we talking about Mm -hmm. our identities are not found in if you like to wear pink or not yeah you know your identity is not found in you being a woman or you being a man. Those are core parts of you, yeah, but that's not the core. And I think we put way, way too much onto that. And that's why I think we're in certain situations. Because hmm. that video describes her seeing a man being a man that he's supposed to be, right? He just happens to be a man. <laughs> And by response, design happens. Well, what do you mean by that? Because because I actually look at that and I think it feels to me like she's maybe seeing a man being the man that he is supposed to be. And so that almost somehow lets her off the hook of being the woman that she's supposed to be. But women are not supposed to be independent. Men are not supposed Mm. to be independent either. We're not independent 
human like we're humans we depend on each other right well and in a marriage specifically there is an element of like like you are now partners like your lives have come together so yes you are still your own person but like there's no your lives have come together right yeah so so i get that like i get what you're saying like, and and that's kind of my point too right our identities our core of who we are is independent yes i am ej but before i even have my name i am still a child of god before mm-hmm. my name even my name is even there but because he made man and woman and we occupy these bodies relationally we're not supposed to be independent Mm -hmm. right but that's not to say you can't live a life single of course you can because at the end of the day our core is independent but when it comes to well you can be single but not alone yeah but when it comes to how we interact with each other especially romantically we're not supposed to be independent creatures so the idea of I went from independent boss babe to this, like, you kind of just fell into design. I get what you're saying, but in the specific case of this video, I don't know if I fully agree with you. Her assessment of what happened is flawed. What happened was n- nature taking its course. I don't know if I fully agree with that. What's there to disagree with? You have a thought. No, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, do I have a tone? No, I see. You're like ready. <laughs> no, it's not even that. I because I feel like what I'm going to say is going to slightly backtrack from what is being said. So finish, and then I'll come in. Okay, I was going to say. I meant in response to his question, though. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, here's why I disagree with you. Because the 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 person that she's saying that she transformed into has nothing to do with like character traits in like a a healthy life sense. The person that she's saying she transformed into was playful and carefree, says silly things, laughs loudly, wears fun outfits, and acts clumsy. So she feels safe. That's a, that's Which a, is that's fine. A, that's an immature way of saying, I feel safe and comfortable with this person. I feel like I don't have to be the one taking care of everything. I can let my guard down. She just said it terribly. That's the sentiment, though. Well, it was said terribly. I will agree with you on that. Okay, what are your thoughts? <laughs> okay. First, I was just going to read Genesis 1, verse 27. Bring us back to the beginning. <laughs> Shall I? Okay. So, to paint the scene. It's the sixth day Because we love doing that here. We love to paint a scene. That's another shirt. Yeah, paint, paint, to paint the, the scene. scene. Let me paint the scene. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's the sixth day of creation. God has done his ting. Okay. Yeah. He has created all the things, all the animals. He created land, water, yada, 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 yada. And then God says, verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And then God blesses them in verse 28 says be fruitful and increase in number fill the earth subdue it rule over the fish of the sea the birds of the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground and then he goes on to bless them and tell them you know these are the things you could eat these are the things you could do and god saw that he had made and said it was very good right so before we can discuss male and female i do agree we have to discuss what we are just human like, we were created as human, all of us in the image of God. So once that is out of the way, then I think it's fair to start assigning attributes. Now, when you said, is womanhood being confused with femininity? I think 
we could describe womanhood as, I mean, this is a very basal. This is like my, the dictionary of Shana. So this is not at all polished, but if you think of like <laughs> polished womanhood, it's like the umbrella of being a woman, like your experience of living as a woman. For us, we're talking about it in the biblical context. We were created as a woman, whatever. Now with that, you said character traits, there are certain character traits, but then you're saying you feel like there's also like these feminine things like you wear dresses and you this and you that. I think that they're actually all the same. I do believe that femininity is the character of being a woman. However, I believe that like many things that humans do, we watered it down. Mm -hmm. And so in that video, what's being described are some character traits that you might see in a woman who's dealing with a man who is in his character traits that he's been assigned as a man. I'm not going to dispute that. Like, I'm not going to lie and say that, like, if I'm with my dad or my brother, girl, I don't know where I am. Like, straight up, I do not know where I am. We had I, this she's conversation lost. when we went to Ikea. Yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. I And it's, and it's like, I, I don't need to be. I've been around other men where I know exactly where I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. with, with certain men, with my dad and my brother, I don't need to know. I don't, I don't even need to look both ways before I cross the street. I do because I know I should. But like, if I really didn't want to, I know I don't have to. Mm -hmm. That does not suddenly strip away the other parts of me as a woman or of my femininity. But I think it does say something about how we might fit into our roles based on who we're with and how that person is living out their role. Mm -hmm. I think your gripe, I'll say, with this video is... The use of some of the adjectives. Silly. Carefree. Um, saying girl. Clumsy. Clumsy. Act silly. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think that those... I agree. I don't think it's worded the best, but I don't... I think, again, we are just falling into what we're su not supposed to... Yeah, supposed to be doing, I guess. We'd be scared what, to say that. Pardon? We, like, it's like It's like it's taboo. To mm -hmm. say that men and women have roles in in context with each other. We fit together like a puzzle. Yeah. Well, I do think that there is a very, like, complimenting No, it thing. most definitely is. Like, the, the Bible talks about it. The Bible literally explains. I have it written down and everything. Like, <laughs> there, there's moments gives where, us where context. I'm carefree because I know that you will take care of something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, right. like, the character traits... Are they exclusively feminine or masculine? I personally don't think so. I don't believe so either mm -hmm. because, again, that's why I read that verse to just highlight if we're made in the image of God, both male and female, we are all going to have the character traits of God. They're mm -hmm. overlapping. However, we apply them in different ways. Right. Yeah. Like, emotionally speaking, could I, like protect you in some kind of a way i think so absolutely yes you can physically speaking maybe you not. might be on your own <laughs> but if i'm walking down a dark street by myself am i going to feel significantly safer if you're with me than absolutely. if i was by myself one million percent mm -hmm. totally yeah but again we see the example like okay in in proverbs 31 the proverbs 31 woman it says that her husband's heart is safe with her. So that would imply an element of right. protection. Mm -hmm. um, but then we're also seeing that men are called like, men lay your lives down for your wife. So that would imply protection. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Again, we just apply these character traits in different ways. And that is such a beautiful thing that they, they can be so vast and nuanced and all mm -hmm. those things. Um, but back to the video, what I'm saying is, I think that in a very counterfeit, messed up way, there's truth there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what I will also say is that I think as Christian women, we need to move away from the idea of the fact that we're just in this one little tiny box and femininity has to look a very specific way because then you are shutting yourself down to what the man of God that God might have placed in your life might need. I genuinely believe that we got to kind of <laughs> roll with the punches here and be receptive and be open and be responsive and don't just assume, okay, because in this moment, I'm not feeling this from him. 
it means that I shut down this part of my femininity Mm -hmm. or because like, you know, because I'm safe now, suddenly I don't have that strong willed, independent, quote unquote, part of me. You still have it. It just doesn't have to be activated as strongly right now. If, or at least never scenario. Yeah. No, you you totally yeah. are. You absolutely are. Yeah. I think I think if we're all in Christ, mm-hmm. we actually share the same character traits. We do. We're in the image I of God. I think they just present differently in men and women. Exactly. Like you said, you protecting me looks different than me protecting you. Mm-hmm. Me feeling safety from you looks different than you feeling safety from me. Right. But the character traits are the same thing. Mm-hmm. I think if we're like thinking about it, for example, like the fruits of the spirit, I mean, those were not written for men, nor were they written solely for women. They were written for the children. of God. That was th- right. It applies to all of us. You insert your name here. Right. That's not like a masculine or a feminine or a man or a woman thing. It's just not. That's for everybody. So, yeah, there is some so much the overlap i i agree it might look a little bit differently um i think in the specific case of this video i i would agree that like if we really 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 water it down i understand the point that this person was trying to get at i do but i think that maybe there's Maybe, maybe there's a little bit of like an identity thing happening there where at one point I identified as a strong, independent woman, but now I have this man. So now I identify as like his girl, (laughs) right? As opposed to I am still me. I am still who I am. I am still who God has called me to be. I am still you know, working on pursuing and developing the skills and the gifts and the character traits and the everything that God has gifted me with and that are a part of, you know, my, my, my God given purpose. Um, but now I'm also in this marriage and this relationship with this person. And so because our lives have come together, now I can, essentially reap the benefits of having that overlap of the same character traits just manifesting differently. Does that make sense? Like, I feel like maybe it's like an identity thing Mm. and it seems like this person, while there, I get the idea. It just seems like it gives the impression that like they once knew who they were, but then lost themselves in the relationship. Does that kind of make sense? It it makes sense. I don't know if I see an element of losing themselves, though. And what what I think I'm trying to bear in mind throughout all this is at the end of the day, people make videos to gain traction. And so the way things are phrased are clickbaity, right? Totally. I'm just saying, like, if we take it literally. Yeah. Because clickbaity... But there are people who will fall for the clickbait and take it literally, even if it wasn't made to be literal. I don't think it's unfair also to to say that because of how rampant these kind of videos are, that this kind of thinking has infiltrated the minds of just people, especially young people. It has. It totally has. I agree. We have the whole soft girl era thing happening now. You know, it's. Again, women are tired, Mm -hmm. but uh, I'm trying to figure out how exactly I want to say this. I think while, while you think the reason why I think it's important to me is because like, for example, not that we have all the answers, but like we can look at a video like that and like pick through it and find the like bits of truth that's hidden in it. And then like, use wisdom and discernment to kind of like filter through the rest. Um, But there are people who due to whatever circumstances, whatever don't have the ability to do that or don't know that they should do that. And so they do end up taking it literally, or it's the women who like you described (laughs) who are tired of being the boss babe. And so 
they feel like they want to make that shift in their life. And so they're making that video having essentially then experienced both, but then they're teaching the younger girl who hasn't experienced both. And so who doesn't have that wisdom and perspective that like, this is the right thing. This is what you want. This is how you should think. This is how you should feel. And so without the wisdom and the perspective and the discernment and all those kinds of things, I feel like that's why it's important to talk about because I know that there are people who are being influenced by those kinds of videos, taking it very literally and setting up their lives accordingly. Yeah. yeah you know, definitely, definitely. So yeah, yeah. I just feel like in a Christian sense is a Proverbs 31 woman, the goal, for example, and is this it? Or is that describing kind of more of like a sugar baby? Don't don't let your goal be a Proverbs 31 woman. Women. I don't think that should be your goal. I think the whole Proverbs. <laughs> Read the whole book. Agreed. I'm just using it as an example. I know, but again, I think... I think Ooh, that leads me to another thought that I had. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> All right, save it. One sec. I think we put too much emphasis on womanhood and manhood. And I think if you just lean into Jesus, the rest sorts itself out. Our identities are in our genders. That's the whole movement right now. Our identities are in what we choose to be, what we want to identify as. When our identities already been decided so like the whole, everything is like a perverted truth you know because there is an element we're made in the image of god so we act as though we are but a lot of people don't know it so we pervert it but deep down we know like we feel what we're supposed to be but we just fight it because fallen world sin mm. but we p focusing way too much on our genders and not who created us. Yeah. What were your thoughts? Um, I was, what I was going to say is that, you know, keeping in mind the context of what our goal is with the podcast, which is talking about the heart of womanhood to the Christian girls out there, the Christian women <laughs> or all of the above, whatever, mm -hmm. who, are kind of wondering about just where they're supposed to fit and what it's supposed to look like. I would say, yes, you know, it is okay to desire somebody that you feel safe and protected with. Thousand percent. Yes, it is okay to have In fact, you should. <laughs> yeah. If you don't feel safe and protected by the person with that you're with. Yes, but I red mean. Red flag. Yes, but also like. Truly, because I mm -hmm. think that sometimes we can, you can feel safe and protected, but it's like a shallow version of it. So I'm saying like deeply, like yeah. a biblical safe protection, which you will find if you open the word of God, you will see it, you will find it. Um, yes, it is okay to have moments where you are carefree. Yes, it is okay for all these things, but I also want you to remember um, that your worth is in your whole person, not just how you interact with one person. Mm -hmm. And so like, yes, you're gentle, but yes, you are strong. Mm -hmm. And yes, you can be carefree, but yes, you could have all your ducks lined up in a row. Yeah. Yes. You are also responsible. And yes. You are also industrious, industrious and, yeah. and you are Smart. wise and you are all of these things. And it is important for us to make sure that we are not putting things down to the wayside in an attempt to look like a certain thing that you're hoping will attract, for example, mm -hmm. men, the attention of others, um, esteem, whatever that might look like. I just want to remind you that you are a whole person with all these mm -hmm. beautiful facets that God created you to have. And in you cultivating all those different things and seeking the Lord in that, you will end up having exactly what you're supposed to have mm -hmm. and, and be the way you're supposed to be. You will figure out how to navigate the world as a woman of God with sure these feminine traits or qualities with these character traits, 
But most importantly, they're going to be character traits that are backed by what God would have for you. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of just what I wanted to say because we get a lot of messaging. Um, I know men get a lot of messaging about what they should be. I'm not saying that they don't, but women get a lot of it. I'm going to speak from that because that's all I know. Yeah. Um, we get a lot of messaging about what we should be like and and how we should behave and how all we should these look. different things. Yeah. But at the heart of this, it's people trying to search for who they are. And you already know who you are. Like again, if you open the word of God, you're going to see and if exactly you don't, who you're supposed to be. And if you don't, you won't find it in in all that stuff. In the other stuff, yeah. No. Mm-hmm. I think that's all I really wanted to say on yeah. that though. Yeah. I think I would add to that, too. Like, we've talked quite a bit about the idea of the Proverbs 31 wife. Because I think that's, like, the stereotype. I mean, it's in the Bible, so it's not just a stereotype. It's real. But, like, it's the thing that comes to mind, I think, first when people think of biblical womanhood, Mm -hmm. if you will. Um, But I think I would add to what you said and just say that if you are wanting to... Um, like look for examples um, in the Bible of, you know, people who like had good character and who displayed good traits and who, um, you know, lived lives that were full of like really valuable lessons that you can learn from or take inspiration from or any number of things. Um, you don't have to just look at the women characters. I feel like that's another thing is there's kind of this idea that like, oh, if you're a woman, well, then you should read about Ruth and you should read about Esther and you should read about, and like, yes, read about them. Like there's so much to learn. Like those are amazing people um, to read about and, and learn from. But like, you don't have to just stop there. Like the male characters in the Bible are not just for men to learn from and the women characters in the Bible are not just for the women to learn from. Um, so like read, just read the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> learn from all of it. You don't have to just stick to the, the women things because you're a woman. Like, and if there's any men listening, like go read Esther, like <laughs> go read about Ruth. Like there's read a lot Proverbs. Read pro- read about Proverbs thirty one. Yeah, like no, there's the whole book. <laughs> the whole thing. I know, but I'm just I'm trying to make a point. I think that point. adds to the point though. Yeah, you're right, it does. Yeah. R- the point is read the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't like the the determination and the strength that you see in like some of the male characters in the Bible, for example, like that applies to you too. Mm-hmm. You know, the the gentleness or the softness or the patience is not just for the women and like the strength and the determination and the, you know, fighting spirit is not just for the men. Yes. If there's overlap, like we've been talking about in, in character traits, um, then there's overlap and embrace it. <laughs> Period. As God put it there. Yeah. 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 That's that on that. <laughs> Boy breaks? Okay. 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 Did I have the question? Did you no, or did you? It was, I think it was me. Okay. All right. Um, All right. So I was thinking about it the other day, how for women there's kind of, and again, I, I think I was thinking about it because there was a lot of just thoughts about what what is a feminine woman and like mm-hmm. what are this role and that role. And so there's this idea of, what's expected of a woman in dating and in marriage. Like you hear a lot like, okay, you're not his wife yet. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do the next. Um, But I at least have not heard a lot about that from men. I feel like women receive the messaging of, okay, like you're looking for a leader. He better this, he better that. And it seems like a man has to show you all his husbandly qualities before you get married. And women are kind of told like, don't act the wife yet. Hmm. So I wanted to know, um, EJ, if you think that men feel like there is a distinction in how they're supposed to behave in courtship versus marriage, or do you feel like you have to show up and show out as like hubby material from the jump or else you're out of the game? 
Yes. I thought you were going to say go, go deeper. I was about to, <laughs> I was about to say go deeper. I was waiting for it. Um, <laughs> yes. I think men from when they're little boys are, it's like drilled into our heads from day one how to treat women. Like that's kind of what drives us as we grow. Like, our pursuits in life are for women. If I'm thinking about it from a very honest point, everything we do is for women. We're trying to get women. We're out here searching for women. <laughs> Who is it? Trying to get women. sounds exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it can be when when you, when you feel like it's a competition, mm. right? You have to be this. You have to present this. You got to do this better than the next guy because if you can't, she's not going to pick you because male dominance and all that kind of stuff. Who has the brightest feathers? This is all very primal. <laughs> it is, though. Yeah. It is. And um, so, yeah, I I do think that when when you are interested in a woman you have to present to her a, a an image of what marriage could look like cuz end of the day it's her choosing like it's her that says yes or no you know it's the guy that asks the question so because of that you got to offer her something you got to put a good deal on the table and if he just chooses it blindly, that wouldn't be wise either. So, yeah. On the flip side, though, I don't know. You guys can tell me if I'm wrong or not. I don't know if older women are teaching younger women how to prepare to be wives. Or is it just when you become a wife, you're just the now wife? Hmm. Like I don't, I don't. You guys answered it. I don't know. Okay. So I think there's a part of it where the very basic, like, not like a part of marriage, but I know very much another biggest part of marriage. Like, let's say, cooking, cleaning, caring for things. One, a lot of that is just going to come with like you grew up in a home and if if you had a mom and an, or an auntie or somebody around who expected you to help out at home Sorry. you're no that's okay you're just going to learn that mm -hmm. but that is like not much of what it's a lot of what marriage is in terms of like the fact that you live in this space and you're supposed to take care of it but it's also not mm -hmm. so i think that part i won't even address because i just think innately we kind of learn it or a lot of us are blessed to and i think it is a blessing if innately you just grew up surrounded by it and you understand and you've learned. I understand that that's a privilege and not everyone has that experience. But that aside, um, I think a pitfall that can often happen is that women are not taught directly and intentionally about being wives until they're about to be a wife. And I think it's the same thing for men though. I think that a lot of times it's like, okay, you have this girl now oh, maybe you're even at the point where you proposed to her, let's start teaching you about what it's like to be a husband. And I think that the conversation should start a lot earlier. And I think that because it doesn't, that's why we get into situations for women specifically where we're all bristling at words like submission and and like serving and all these different things because we don't understand what it actually means. So I, I think there could be more conversation about what godly wifehood looks like and how it should be employed and what to expect in all the different areas because I know there are women walking into marriage who were shocked by various things. Um, I think there could be more open communication on that, but I, I also think it's exactly the same way we'd say it would be for men. I really don't think that it's one over the other. I think this is an equal problem. Hmm. It's funny, the idea of like women specifically getting like, uh, like uncomfy about the idea of using words like, you know, submission or serving and that kind of thing. Cause I think again, 
all of these, um, I mean, those are actions, but like character traits, for example. Um, and I'll just throw those words into sure. that. If there is overlap of all of those kinds of things, um, then like there also is in marriage. I mean, like Jesus, like he came and served, like he submitted to the will, to of, the God. will of God. So, you know, those, um, those things are not just like for women. Again, if you're in marriage and you're combining your lives together, like there is an element of those things that both of you guys are going to have to do. Um, but I think specifically about like what we were saying, I feel like, yeah, I feel like one, those kinds of conversations don't happen soon enough. And I can't speak specifically for men, but for women, I wonder if it's that it's like the, the stereotypical kind of things that get ingrained in us from a young age. You know, when you're like little girls, you get given like baby dolls you know, and then you get like the plastic brightly colored, like Fisher Price, like kitchen thing. <laughs> right. And then, so it's like all of those kinds of like stereotypical wifey kind of duties, like you cook and you clean and you raise the kids, um, gets ingrained from a very young age. But in terms of like relationally speaking, what it means to be a wife, like that relationship with your your person your best friend your your husband um I don't know if that stuff gets talked about mm -hmm. a whole lot mm -hmm. and I wonder for the men what it's like is it maybe the opposite I don't know whether like where you get taught as a man like you know this is how you're supposed to treat a woman and like you know you should buy her flowers once a month and you know be nice to her and blah, blah, blah. But they don't get taught things like, okay, you live in this house too. So cleaning is also part of your responsibility. Cooking also part of your responsibility. The kids you helped make them. So you need to help raise them like that kind of thing. Right. I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. But for women. Yeah. I feel like. I, I, would, I would say it's taught more than you think. Okay, that's fair. I'm not a man. I don't know. <laughs> I would definitely say it's top. What do you think? Okay. I think the 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 um the gap between those who it's not taught to and who it is, I think they're it's both there. I think it's down the middle, maybe skewed a little bit to one or the other. I think in today's society, it's skewed towards the better version. Um, you're talking about like household duties and stuff. Yeah. Would you say that that's a more recent thing though? Well, yeah, because women are more in the workforce. Hmm. I think, I think in a time period when women weren't working and all they were doing was being at home and the men were going out, you know, a man going out, having the only income to take care of the home, he, that's him serving his family. Well, to, and to be clear, men were working outside the home and women were very much working inside the home That's because the if, yeah, if you had to pay somebody to do all of the things that like a stay at home mom would be doing in terms of homemaking, you'd be at a lot of money. <laughs> that I, person I, would be getting paid a lot. <laughs> okay. But my, my point is women being in the workforce, mm -hmm. I think the more that that has become a thing is the more that men have equalize the household chores sure mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i was going to say that i think women are taught a lot about motherhood and homemaking mm -hmm. and not necessarily wifehood mm. that's that's, that's, what, a, I that's, that's yeah. what i was trying to say that's what i was trying to say yeah yeah like we are again you grow up learning like you get your chores you have your toys that it's like take care of the baby do this do that i mean us firstborn daughters know like you are a little mini homemaker from the jump because yeah. it's like you're your mom's right hand like me and my mom joke about that all the time like we don't even have to talk we know exactly what we're doing we move in sync we're like a little machine like it's just the way it is but that doesn't tell me how to love a husband mm-hmm now, I'm blessed in that I get to see 
a, a very God-centered relationship from yeah. my parents in front of me. Um, but even then, I still feel like I have to take up initiative and ask questions because I can look and the marriage I'm going to end up in if I do is going to look very different than my parents because those are those two individuals and not me and said other person. But I, I do think and I would love for there to be more conversation on wifehood and learning how you can learning the fact that yes a man is caring for you and providing for you and protecting you but that does not mean it's all about you and I think that right now in dating culture it's the idea of Mm -hmm. the man is again he's flaunting his stuff he's showing you like I am the table do you like the table like he's showing you all that and so it can be very selfishly geared towards the woman in a dating situation it's like Okay, he brings me flowers. He does this. He does that. What am I giving? Well, I'm cute. Like, yeah. the end. That drives me nuts. Which, yeah. well, but that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's fair. And I think that it translates into marriage. And I'm sure, and again, I'm not married, so I could be speaking out of turn. But what I would assume is that there's probably a lot of women who are in earlier stages of marriage or, you know, just, yeah, just not seasoned in marriage, let's say, um, who had a big fat slap in the face when they realized oh, marriage is not all about me. Like, I have to do a lot of other things, not involving cooking and cleaning and Mm -hmm. watching children and whatever that is, but centered around caring for this man that God gave me and nurturing him. And also committing to growing as a person. Absolutely. Because there is nothing more exposing and (laughs) refining than getting married. Like, if you didn't know about yourself before... And you get married. Welcome. (laughs) You're about to learn. Yeah. Whether you like it or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do think that's a good point. I think, I think because of the nature of what boys are taught about girls, I think it translates into marriage a little bit more focused on the other person. And to your point, I think women yeah, yeah, I think you go into it thinking about motherhood and homemaking. and homemaking and all that stuff. And I and I do think take like Those are wi- beautiful things. Wife wifehood is overlooked a lot. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of men, husbands, um, suffer from because of it. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think then everyone ends up with a jaded perspective of relationships. Like I mean, and I think what you said about dating being very, like, self-centered was so spot on. Like, I see videos all the time about girls making jokes about how they're at, like, a lunch date with some guy. And they have their dinner date for the day texting them to, like, confirm that, like, they're still on kind of thing. And then, like, other videos where girls talk about, like, how much they've, like, cut their grocery bill. (laughs) Because they just, like, strategically plan their dinner dates. Like, yes. Like, that's awful that's terrible i think that like i mean that's just like basic humanness to me like if you would not want to be essentially taken advantage of that way i i don't think yeah women like let's make sure we're not exploiting the men um and taking for granted the fact that while yes you might be looking for and i'm not saying it's bad to like expect him to pay or not even I don't want to use the word expect but to know that like I would be very grateful if you paid let us Mm -hmm. actually take it as a gratitude and recognize that he didn't have to and sure you have the choice if he wasn't going to you don't have to go out either but I'm just saying like let us not take for granted the fact that he worked for that money and it was hard earned let us not take for granted the fact that somebody is coming to take you out let us not take for granted all these things Um, but something I was just going to say in terms of, you know, women might enter a marriage and be shocked, like, oh, wait, it isn't really all about me. There's all these things I have to do. I could be wrong. So this is more of a question, I guess I'm asking EJ. Um, because you're saying like men are kind of taught all these things, how to treat a woman, all these things. Um, I'm wondering if men could enter a marriage and know how to treat a woman, know what they're supposed to do, know how to protect and provide and like make all the money and all that stuff, but maybe be lacking in how to actually sacrificially love a woman. Hmm. I, I have a thought. Hmm. I don't think this thought is 
um, what's the word I'm looking for? Is it not developed? No, it is. Oh. I don't think it's the rule. Okay. Or I don't think it should be the rule, but I think it might be uh, a common experience for men. I think what happens is because, again, we're raised on how to treat women. We're taught that you need to provide, right? So we pursue a woman, go through all this stuff, you know? Um, you, you're you paying for the dinners. You're paying for everything. You're, you're, you're trying to present as best as you can in hopes that I will marry this woman, you know? And I think what happens, and I'm, again, this is not an excuse, but I think this might be... Um, a factor. I think what happens is the men get into the marriage and because the women don't understand wifehood, I think the men might feel um, like they were robbed. So a little resentful. Yeah. And I think what happened, because you hear a lot of stories. Once we got married, he stopped doing X, Y, Z. You know? He stopped taking me out on dates. He yeah. stopped pursuing me. Yeah. He doesn't bring me flowers anymore. Yeah. And and although, man, just keep doing it, you know, like keep keep trying at least. I think what might happen in the in the brain of a man is that I did all these things to get you, and now I got you, and you're not really taking care of me. But you keep, but you want me to keep doing these things, right? And I can imagine some men might be like, "Why did I even marry you? What was the point? Mm. To just have someone that's gonna burn my pocket out?" <laughs> I, I go to work for you, I sacrifice for you, I serve you by working and doing all these things, but I come home and you won't even, you know, like, men like sex. <laughs> oh, I was not, I was like, what is he possibly talking Men like sex, right? But sex is a huge thing, right? And And even though it's work in a marriage and it requires two people to work towards it, I think... I think that is something that is not explained to men about husbandship. And it's that once you marry her, now that you've married her, there's a new level of work you have to do. Hmm. And I think because we're not taught that part, we get really disappointed because our expectations are where it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And I think resentment happens. And then because he feels resentment, he stops doing all the things she's like well he stopped loving me so she, she doesn't, doesn't want to give the anymore. things right and it just becomes this cycle so well yeah it's i think like part of what you're describing is the idea that like providing for example is far more than just financially and so if he stops if she feels like he stops pursuing her then there's a feeling of like well now i don't like you said feel loved I don't feel emotionally connected I don't feel like you know my my emotional needs are being met and if sex is a very vulnerable and emotional thing which it is it's it's you know an incredibly is the deepest form of connection then to do that without feeling like I am deeply loved and therefore I'm deeply safe um you know, that that's, that's missing. And so then that doesn't happen. And then, like you said, then it's like, it, it becomes almost like this like cycle loop. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It, be it becomes the blame game. You mm -hmm. know, where the husband will say, well, you don't X, chicken y, and Z. the egg. Yeah. Right. So I think overall, I think there needs to be way more, um, training for marriage. Uh, on both ends. Yeah. For both people. Yeah, I think I think like a month of premarital before you get married is not <laughs> enough at all. Mm. I think um I think sometimes people have kids way too quick and they don't give themselves a chance to learn how to be married and work through all the nitty gritty. Yeah. Without the um overlying feeling of oh I Okay, well sometimes that's not a choice. <laughs> If you get married and start having sex, that's how babies are made. So, I'm aware of that. <laughs> I said I think sometimes people have kids too soon. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant like intentionally. 
intentionally or not. Oh. The statement is the statement. Oh. The reason why you had a kid is irrelevant. Have a kid. <laughs> but I think wisdom, I think it would be wiser to learn how to be married first. If you can, choose that. Mm. It's wiser. I see what you're saying. That's that's the point. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Do you have any final thoughts, Shayna? No, I think that's it. <laughs> Okay, in my brain, you're like, nope, that's all I got. And then it's just like crickets. <laughs> I wonder I wonder if, <laughs> if you audience listeners can tell when we record at night versus the daytime. Mm. I don't know. That's a good question. I feel like if anybody would give it away more than the other, I feel like it would probably be you who gives it away. I'm like, I'm such a morning girl. I was, again, I, I was know. up at 5 a.m. I can catch <laughs> a second so wind. Much. But I feel like when you like when you run out of gas, I'm out like like that's it. Well, like, because my second wind has to hit at like 2.30 p.m. So mm-hmm. I'm on what, like a fourth wind right now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, feel I, like apologize, tell- I feel like there's telltales of if we're recording late. There's like Shane is tired. I'm sorry. Guys. I'm more likely to be in sweats. Yeah. Or I'm talking a lot more. True. <laughs> That's true. If it's a daytime episode, I don't talk as much because you guys are awake. <laughs> we need the support. <laughs> Sorry, guys, for being I, tired. I just gave away production sequence. Okay, <laughs> do you feel like 3 p.m. on a daily basis is like the most tired that you've ever felt? Actually, I get really tired around noon. Mm. Like really tired, like fighting for my lifetime. Mm-hmm. For me, it's actually around like four, not so much three, but around four. Oh. I think it's because I pack. I can't. So I can't like. I gotta blink morning. quick because if I keep my eyes closed for too long, it's just you're I'm out. Yeah. Well, it's it's ten p.m. So Shayna, take a second. It's past my bath. Yeah, wrap it up. Time. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to give us a like, um, or give us a rating and review if you are listening to us on audio. If you are listening to us on audio, heads up, we are on video. You could find us on YouTube. Um, otherwise, if YouTube is not your thing, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to your podcasts. All that information is in the show notes below. Um, if you want to follow Priya, EJ, or myself, that information is also in the show notes as well. Uh, until next time, stay faithful, stay courageous, keep embracing the journey, and don't get your panties in a bunch. Bye, guys. Good night. <laughs>